And now, preview time. When it comes to entertainment, you can't beat a good film. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. Welcome back to Matt Presents Movie Nights. Uh, last time it was Metal Ween. It's actually the day before Halloween. So uh, we watched a metal triple feature. Starting, of course, with Deathgasm. The best metal zombie movie there is. Possibly the best metal horror movie there is. It is a comedy. <laughs> like, it's, it's a very comedic movie. Um, so... It's, it's not, like, super scary or anything, but I would say it's probably the best metal horror movie. Deathgasm is the story of a uh, New Zealandic kid. It's, it's a New Zealandic film, and it follows this kid named Brody, who uh, whose mom, like, gets arrested, and he has to go live with his religious family, and... He's going to a new school, and no one at the school likes him. He he kind of makes friends with, like, the nerds, but he's, he's not super popular. Uh, and then he meets this other guy, whose name I fucking forget. Zach. It's Zach with two Ks. What a fucking dick. Like, Zach is, like, a kind of douchey name, but you can still kind of get away with it. But if it's Zack with two Ks, that guy's a fucking douche. So he and Zack become friends, and they start a metal band called Deathgasm. And they go out to the house of Ricky Daggers, this famous New Zealandic metal musician, I guess. Um, and they find, like, these... The, the, like, the sheet music for this song he has, and it turns out it's, like ancient music that resurrects demons, which you'll notice is damn near identical to the plot of, like, so many of the movies I've reviewed. And to be fair, when Deathgasm does it, it's a joke. They are... This is very much a throwback parody of the types of stuff I would show during Metal Ween. It is, it is not meant to be wholly original or wholly serious. Um, the the biggest, most obvious influence is Trick or Treat. I think they, they even specifically said Ricky Daggers is supposed to be... Um, oh, fuck, what's the guy's name from that? Sammy Kerr. Sammy Kerr, as portrayed by Tony Fields. Um... But the music was done by the guitarist from Motorhead. Uh, Ricky Dagger is a Sammy Kerr. There are some similarities in the plot between this and uh, Trick or Treat. Although it, it also clearly pulls from like Black Roses and, and all those other types of metal movies. I wonder how obscure their knowledge gets. Because maybe they've seen Hard Rock Zombies too. That there's definitely some Hard Rock Zombie vibes to this. Um, but also, it's got a great sense of style. Like, like it's it's not. I mean, first off, it's very funny. So, and then second off, it has a great sense of style. So it's not just relying on being a throwback to these types of movies. Um, it's got a lot going on. It's like, stylistically, I, I would describe it as sort of a, a mashup of, like, Scott Pilgrim and Metalocalypse. And, and it pulls a lot more from Metalocalypse than just the, the death metal stuff. There's, like, like the villain of the movie feels very Metalocalypse-esque. Because it's, like, this rich guy who wants the, uh, the demon music because he wants to be possessed by the demon and gain its powers. And there's a scene where he, he has his people 
cut this guy's head off and then he's like oh no no don't do it on the carpet lay out a tarp first but they've already cut the guy's head off so they have to like lay out a tarp and like cut the guy's head off a second time <laughs> they're just kind of like holding it up to his neck and then like oh we cut it off this time and that to me that's a very metalocalypse scene to me the villain reminds me of like a villain from metalocalypse and also you know all the death metal shit throughout the whole movie so metalocalypse meets scott pilgrim meets any movie i've reviewed for metal ween and I mean, if that doesn't sell you on this fucking movie, I, I don't know what will. That sounds perfect. That sounds amazing. Um, crazy violent. Also, probably some, like, uh, some, like, Evil Dead influence to it. Um, and, uh, oh, fuck. Peter Jackson. Some, like, early Peter Jackson influence to it. Um, like, like, to the point one of the characters is wearing a bad taste t-shirt in one scene. Um, I mean, that one's kind of a given, though. Peter Jack, early Peter Jackson, it's a hyper-violent horror comedy, and it's set in New Zealand. Of course, that's Peter Jackson. That's P early Peter Jackson's turf. I am astounded Peter Jackson got to make Lord of the Rings. Because if you see his early movies, they are so fucking disgusting. Fucking, uh, bad taste and, and, uh, brain damage. Or dead alive. He was dead alive in America, but it was brain damage and... No, not brain damage. Fuck me. Uh, brain damage is Frank Henenlotter. What was that movie called in New Zealand? Brain dead. Brain dead. Brain Damage is Frank Henenlotter. I love Brain Damage. I should show Brain Damage. Maybe, maybe, because he did make Heavenly Creatures. Heavenly Creatures is pretty good, and it's a lot more tame than his other movies. So maybe Heavenly Creatures is what got him Lord of the Rings? I could see that. There's some very good fantasy sequences in that movie. I'm off topic. New Zealand produces, like, four different types of movies. <laughs> like, the hyper-violent horror movies... Uh, Lord of the Rings, Taika Waititi films. I can't think of anything else. I can't think of anything. I mean, there's like Once Were Warriors, which is like, like a, if a Taika Waititi film wasn't a comedy, like if he just did a straight drama. It's a good movie. I like Once Were Warriors. I also like Every single thing Taika Waititi has done. New Zealand, good filmmaking. Good good place for movies to come from. Even if I haven't seen that many. I'm sure there's plenty of shit from New Zealand. I just haven't seen it. The worst stuff I've seen from New Zealand is the aforementioned disgusting Peter Jackson movies. And even those, like... God damn... I enjoy Dead Alive, but it's it's like the one movie I feel like has crossed the line in terms of violence for me. I'm like, all right, you gone too far with the gore, like, because there's there's like realistic gore, and I kind of don't like realistic gore in movies. And then there's like goofy over the top gore. I love goofy over the top gore, but this is like goofy, over-the-top gore pushed to the point of being disgusting again. Unlike Deathgasm, Deathgasm has the perfect amount of gore. Very gory movie. I enjoyed it. I mean, they, they even, uh... It, the blood in this movie is kind of fake-looking. Like, that that's the level of, like, throwback to old exploitation we're on. It looks like old exploitation movie blood instead of, like, realistic blood. There, there are some noticeable cultural differences because it takes place in New Zealand. Like, the, the, uh, the girl the main character likes, the minute the girl Brody likes, he's like, oh yeah, she's in my maths class. Math? Maths? Maths plural class? 
Just the, just the thing they do in like Britain and uh, and and New Zealand. They pluralize math. It's math class singular. You don't say histories class. You don't you don't say arts class. Math. I, I, I don't understand foreign countries. I'm too American for this. They have characters playing D&D, and one of them just only casts Fireball, just like the meme. Good D&D stuff. Good, good D&D scene. Um, I, uh, there is some uh, music from Anal Cunt in this movie, who you all might remember from uh, Death Metal Zombies. And what do you know? This movie was okay calling them anal cunt and didn't just abbreviate it to AC. Of course, it's New Zealand. They call everyone cunts. That's, a, that's, that's more Australian, though. Australians call everyone cunt. But New Zealand is just like... the other Australia. I don't, I don't know if they call people cunts a lot in New Zealand or not. I assume so. They call... They use cunt a couple times in this movie, so... Yeah. Well, one of my notes is just Dio. And I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure why I wrote Dio on here. <laughs> I took way more notes this time than like ever. Usually I'll have like one note and then I'll forget I have that one note and not talk about the thing I wanted to talk about. But I got like a lot of notes for for this for these three movies. Anyways, Deathgasm. It's a fun movie. I enjoy it. Check it out. It, this is super easy to find. It's on Prime. I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix. I watched it on Netflix for the, fir the first time I watched it. I watched it on Netflix. Uh, it's on Shudder. It's on... Might be on Tubi. I don't know. If you have a streaming service, look for Deathgasm. They probably have it. It's, it's very easy to find on streaming surfaces. I got the uh, nice little Blu-ray here, and they the, uh, the DVD looks like a record, which is nice. They got this reversible cover with the original art, and then that. I think I like that cover better. Like any good exploitation movie, this actually has multiple titles. Because when it released to Walmart... Uh, they, they wouldn't sell, Walmart wouldn't sell a movie called Deathgasm. So the title it sold under at Walmart was Heavy Metal Apocalypse. So just like any good exploitation film, it's got multiple titles. Next up, we watched Pledge Night, and I have to correct something I said last time. I said it has a soundtrack from Slayer. I got the band wrong. It has music from Anthrax, not Slayer. Easy to get those confused, especially when you've never seen the movie. But it was Anthrax, not Slayer. I don't know what I was thinking of that had a Slayer soundtrack. Um, Pledge Night is the story of... Pledge Week, actually. It's not a night. It takes place over the course of a week. Pledge Week at uh a college and you know they're they're abusing the pledges and then uh all of the frat guys start dying because one of the pledges that they hazed way back in the day accidentally died from something and now he's back unclear how he is back he just is he's just back um, and he's killing all of the frat guys for revenge. So, you know, Night Night Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th-esque, and the, you know, coming back from the dead and getting vague revenge on kind of the people who wronged you, but not quite. Kind of strange movie, pretty strange movie. Um, not, not weird enough that I was that into it. Like it didn't differentiate itself so much that I'm like, oh yeah, this is something you gotta check out. But uh, it's a fairly original slasher. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't super bored by it or anything. This is far from the worst movie I've ever shown. Um, 
it does kind of show that frat in initiation is fucking bullshit. I don't know how anyone gets into frats. I would not put up with that shit. Like, gee, it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. Frats have become a lot less of a thing since, like, the 80s. They're big in the 80s, and then now they're not so much. Although, now there's a lot of laws that prevent them from doing the type of shit that they would do in this movie. Interesting note, in this movie they have the exact same skull blacklight poster from Heavy Metal Massacre. It's the exact same poster in two movies from this Metal Ween, so I enjoyed that aspect of it. That made me laugh. I don't know, there's not a whole lot to this movie. It's just sort of... I mean, God. The frat hazing takes, like, so fucking long... It takes so long to get to the actual murders, and then, like, ten murders just happen in, like, five minutes. It's just like, uh, waiting for someone to die, waiting for someone to die, waiting for someone to die. Oh, shit, all these people just died. Wow, that was a lot of death in a very short amount of time. Boy. <laughs> of course, you know, college movie, gotta have tits in there, but it doesn't even make sense. Because it, uh, first off, it's like fucking winter, but isn't Pledge Night, you know, Pledge Week, like, early in the semester, like, August or September? There should not be as much snow as there is for, for Pledge, and maybe it's January, maybe it's like January, February, they're, they're doing pledges for the new semester. Alright, that tracks, I guess. But it's, it's like winter, it's snowing outside, and this girl shows up to the house in this hoodie, and then her boyfriend, like, unzips the hoodie, and she's just, like, shirtless under her hoodie. Who does that? Who doesn't wear a shirt, or, or even, like, a bra, under a hoodie? Like, that's weird. That's gotta be uncomfortable. But it's just, you know, like... Because it's, you know, sleazy movie, you gotta get the tits out there as fast as you can. I really like... I really like the slip cover for this, this Vinegar Syndrome, of course. Um, because I'm always talking about fucking Vinegar Syndrome movies. I really like the slip cover. Uh, partially because it just says fuck off on it. Um... It also says burn fucker on the back. It's a really nice cover art, and then you slide the slip cover off, and it's not as impressive art. And it is reversible, so they have the original poster in here. Which is just a hand coming out of a toilet holding a banana. Which kind of makes sense once you've seen the movie. Unlike... You know, ghoulies. We actually do have someone getting attacked while sitting on the toilet. Pledge Night delivers where ghoulies fails. Yeah, I'm not super impressed with this artwork. I wish it looked more like the slipcover. But I really like the slipcover. Anyways, that's Pledge Night. I don't know that I have anything else to say about it. It's interesting. Um, the music's good, because it's fucking anthrax. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's an 80s slasher movie. I feel like I've shown too many of those. And I mean, this one is better than some of the other ones I've shown, but still, like, I feel like I've shown so many 80s horror movies that I just feel are very samey, very... That's the word I'm looking for here. Un... Not uninteresting, but like, I don't know, they're not what I'm looking for. On the other hand, what I am absolutely looking for is Wild Zeros. I fucking love this movie so much, which should come as a shock to no one if you have seen this movie.
This is a bit more punk rock than metal, but I'm fine with that. You know, it's it's hard rock, loud noise rock, and it's also, you know, a violent zombie movie. Which, exactly the type of shit I'm into. These are all kind of zombie movies, even though Deathgasm and Wild Zero are kind of the more conventional zombie apocalypse, like Night of the Living Dead. Um, whereas Pledge Night, it's just a guy coming back from the dead. But they do call him a zombie in that movie, so... Yeah, we'll say all three of these are zombie movies. Works perfectly. Perfect triple feature. Um... I mean, Wild Zero pairs so nicely with Deathgasm. If you're looking for a good double feature, Deathgasm and Wild Zero work perfectly. Uh, Wild Zero... batshit insane Japanese rock and roll zombie movie. Um, with aliens. The, the aliens cause a zombie apocalypse. And it's up to Ace, who's this huge fan of the band Guitar Wolf, and the band Guitar Wolf. It, it's up to Ace and the band to stop the zombie apocalypse and destroy the aliens, and there's romance stories in there. It's wild. It's f fucking wild. Completely insane rock and roll... Can you guys hear them? The walls here are very thick. I can't hear my neighbors, like, at all. But the door is thin as fuck. I can hear everything that happens directly outside. So, it should come as a shock to no one that the super weird, super crazy Japanese rock and roll alien zombie movie is a movie I would be a huge fan of. Like, that is right up my alley. Love everything about it. And just to sweeten the deal, Wild Zero has probably the best trans representation I have ever seen in a horror movie. Possibly in any movie, but definitely in a horror movie. Um, cause Ace meets this girl at a gas station and he kind of has a crush on her and then, you know, they get attacked by zombies and he's got a rescuer and he takes her to this place and then it's like, oh, she reveals that she's trans and he's like, ah, what the heck, she's trans and then Guitar Wolf shows up in a vision. Not, not, they don't even actually show up. They show up to him in a vision and they're just like, hey... Love is love. Love knows no boundaries. If you really love her, it shouldn't matter that she's trans. And it's like... Why does this fucking Japanese rock and roll zombie movie have a more trans-positive message than any other movie? Ugh. I love it. It's a great movie. It's the best movie. Uh, it's kind of hard to find. It is on YouTube, which is why... I I mentioned that last time. You can find this on YouTube. It's like a DVD rip on YouTube. It's kind of hard to come by because I, I have this uh, Synapse release. Synapse does some pretty nice releases. And this is, I mean, for a, for a DVD that was released in like 2003, 2004, this is a really nice DVD. It's got a lot of good bonus features. Like, it's old enough to say... It, it's, it's old enough to say not all DVD players will play all special features. But yeah, it's, it's got some uh, very interesting special features, including the first ever DVD drinking game. They, uh... There's a drinking game that comes with this movie, and, like, like you can look at the rules, but then it will play the movie, and whenever you need to drink, there'll be, like, a little beer mug on screen. So it's like, take a drink now, take two drinks now. So... I actually stole a couple rules from the drinking game for Wild Zeros for my metal movie drinking game, because some of them do apply to other metal movies. Yeah, I don't know why there's not 
a Blu-ray release of this. Maybe there's not that much demand, but like, how much demand is there for a Pledge Night Blu-ray? Look at this. Synapse, Vinegar Syndrome, someone, get the rights to Wild Zero, Arrow Video, I don't care, someone release a Blu-ray of this. This is one of our most internationally diverse triple features. Uh, the first night we watched American, Italian, and British movies, but Caligula was made with American money and British actors, so I'm not sure how much you can count that as foreign. And then also, you know, Britain. How foreign is Britain? But, uh... Other than... Because this is New Zealand, America, and Japan we've got tonight. And... The only other times we've had three different countries. Uh, Video Nasties Night, we had Italian, American, and Greek. The only Greek film we've shown so far. And... The Bug Night, we did China, Spain, and America. So, yeah, international triple feature. Because usually if I show a foreign movie, I'm going to show more than one foreign movie with it. Like, they're all going to be from the same country. Like, three Japanese films, three Canadian films. And... <laughs> So far, we have not had an international triple feature without America. So, like, like if, if two of the films are from different countries, one of them's gonna be America. We have yet to do three different countries that does not include America. One of, one of, the, one of our more internationally diverse triple features tonight, which I'm happy about. I'm very, I, I like showing movies from other countries. Keep this show diverse. There's a scene in this movie where he's fighting zombies with a mop. And it makes me wonder if that's a deliberate Toxic Avenger reference. It wouldn't surprise me. Like, this this definitely gives some trauma vibes. The whole movie gives some trauma vibes. So if that's a deliberate Toxic Avenger reference, it wouldn't sh shock me. But also, like, Toxic Avenger's a little bit obscure <laughs> so seems weird that a, a Japanese movie would be referencing it but you know stranger things have happened my one criticism is there's a scene with really bad sound effects like it, he's trying to like open a door that's locked but it plays this like door opening sound effect every time he tries to open it and First off, it's like an obviously fake door opening sound effect, but also he's not even opening the door. It's locked. Why is it? Why are you making door opening sound effects? But other than that, perfect movie. 10 out of 10. Love it. If you can find, I mean, it's on YouTube. If you're willing to watch it on YouTube, if you're willing to dig up this out of print Synapse DVD, or if they ever release it on Blu-ray, because if they do release it on Blu-ray, I will be on that shit immediately. Highly recommend it. It's not on streaming either. You can't buy it on like iTunes or Amazon Prime, which is weird. It's hard to find, but it, it is, it's out there. So last time I asked what your favorite metal movie was, obviously, and then I specified, please don't say uh, Spinal Tap because Spinal Tap is too obvious. Uh, of course my favorite, Metal movie is Spinal Tap. Number two would probably be Deathgasm. Um, maybe Wild Zero for counting Wild Zero, but like I said, Wild Zero is a little more punk rock than metal. I do think it fits the spirit of a metal movie, but um, the, the whole movie they're talking about rock and roll. They yell rock and roll a lot in that movie. Rock and roll! Yeah, Deathgasm, Wild Zero, both great movies. Those those are probably be my picks for my favorite metal movies. Nuno Q. Ramalho uh, clarifies, last time I, I said I didn't know what movie he was referring to, he clarifies it was a film called The Act of Seeing with One's Own Eyes from 1971. I, I looked, this was a short film, so that's probably why I couldn't find it. 
But there is a short film called uh, The Act of Seeing with One's Own Eyes. Uh, directed by Stan Brackage, known for his experimental short films. So I, I can't say I've seen it. I haven't seen a lot of short films. God damn, my hair is getting long. I haven't seen a lot of uh, short films. Not familiar with Stan Brackage, but uh, definitely something I will look into. My apologies for not searching a little harder for that movie. Uh, anyways, uh, he, he also says his favorite, uh, metal movie is Until the Light Takes Us, which, um, a bit of an odd choice. It's, uh, a documentary about the Norwegian black metal scene, but there's, like, a hundred fucking documentaries about the Norwegian black metal scene. Like, we get it. Mmm. So there's, Until the Light Takes Us is probably the most popular one. There's also uh, Once Upon a Time in Norway, Satan Rides the Media, Pure Fucking Mayhem, uh, and then there's the fictionalized biopic Lords of Chaos. Lords of Chaos? Yeah. Came out like a year or two ago. Uh, Until the Light Takes Us might be the best of those, but... Uh, it's a pretty heavily covered topic, which is kind of unfortunate because I vastly prefer the first wave of Scandinavian black metal. The first wave of Scandinavian black metal had, like, Celtic Frost and shit. That was good. And then you get the second wave, and it's these fucking racist murderers. I, that's just what it is. How else do you describe Burzum? He's a racist murderer. <laughs> to be fair, it was probably in self-defense. He probably killed someone in self-defense. But he's definitely racist. I've seen Until the Light Takes Us. It is pretty interesting. Uh, it's probably... Probably the best of those. At least that I have seen. I haven't seen Satan Rides the Media. And that one definitely has my attention. Because it's sort of... Uh... My understanding is the media blew a lot of these stories out of proportion. Because, like, there was a church burning, and they immediately attributed the church burning to, you know, Burzum and Mayhem. And it's like, they didn't do it. They might have encouraged it, but they didn't do it. That was really the only answer I got. Uh, I believe Henry Koslick said something about having not seen Spinal Tap, which... I mean, it's not like that you have to watch it right now movies, but that is a you should watch Spinal Tap. <laughs> like, Spinal Tap's really good. Um, I mean, not my favorite Rob Reiner movie, but definitely one of Rob Reiner's greatest movies. Rob Reiner has he was so, he had like a perfect streak in the 80s. He did, like, five movies in a row that were great. And then he made North. And his career has not recovered from North. Anyways, it's Friday the 13th. So I'm gonna show a satanic triple feature. I say as if I don't show satanic movies fucking constantly. 11 of the 63 movies I've recommended so far have been satanic. But, um... This, I think, is the first deliberately satanic triple feature. The, f the first time all three of them will be satanic movies. So, that's fun. So it is the day this video is going out. It has gone through filming, editing, uh, exporting. I even uploaded it to YouTube. Before I realized, I forgot to ask the question this week. And it's a really easy question. The question is... What's your favorite satanic movie? It doesn't even have to be a horror movie. Just favorite satanic film. We're going to start with The Omen. The absolute classic. Uh, the, the, the Antichrist movie. Honest to God, I'm pretty sure The Omen has had more of an influence on, on like, the public perception of the Antichrist than the Bible. 
like pe- people's view of the Antichrist is informed more by the Omen than by the Bible. The Omen, the classic, great movie. Then we're going to watch. I got these out of order. Satan's Slave. I can only barely show this cover. Like, there is a naked woman, and both of her nipples are covered, and that's about it. That's about all that's covered on this. Uh, let's, let's keep monetization here. Satan's Slave uh, from 1976. Not to be confused with the one from the 80s, um, which is like an Indonesian film, I think. This one's American. And finally, we're going to watch Lucifer's Women, which, uh, I mean, we'll talk about the next time. I, I, I feel like I say too much. Got John Carradine in it. That's what I'll say this week. It's got John Carradine in it. And before we go, if you're still feeling in the Halloween move, because I, I did kind of talk about my Halloween triple feature. If you're still feeling Halloween-y, uh, I was on my friend Michael's podcast to talk about Halloween, and he got royally screwed by YouTube's copyright system. That's the second time that's happened to him. He he did, like, a, a video on Eight Crazy Nights, and he was trying to get it out during Hanukkah, and it didn't happen because of copyrights. It got delayed, like, two weeks because of copyrights. And here he is again. He did a Halloween video, and it got delayed because of copyrights. So, it's out now, hopefully. <laughs> As I'm recording this, it's not actually out. But he, he said it'll be out before the day is over. So, by the time this video goes up, that should be up. I was on his podcast to talk about Halloween. And until next time, happy Friday the 13th.